Why hello there you lovely human. It's my life here and I'm going to talk to you guys today about how I got my start into voice acting. Now I'm sure a lot of you are pretty interested in this topic and I know that all the voice actors that I know, including myself, get asked this a lot. But uh, the majority of the time, we don't have the time to answer this question. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about, like, you know, how to get started, what equipment to buy, um, where you should go train. I'm not going to go into all that stuff. All I'm really going to do today is talk to you about how I got started. We'll probably just have to start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Uh, <laughs> so, high school, basically. 2002. I was a junior in high school. I was in my class looking on the computer, looking up ADV films. Um, they were the most prominent dubbing comp company at that time. And um, I looked them up, I was on their website, and I saw um, an article about Dirty Pair. And um, the voice actresses that were involved in that had done an interview and they had posted on their website. So I was shocked to realize that holy shit, this is an actual job, people get paid to do this. Like, it was it was hard to believe because, you know, Toonami was still a thing, and um, I had seen plenty of anime, I'd watched Gundam Wing, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, like all the, all the greats, all the greats. But I didn't quite know that people got paid to do this. In hindsight, I can say that um, at the time, uh, dubbing companies were not as good as they are today, so dubs are a lot more truer to their Japanese counterpart than they've ever been before, and that, and because of that, um, the dubs these days are so much better than they've ever been. And so at the time, I was like, wow, it's like, I, I even I knew back then that English dubbing wasn't all that great, and I'm like, I could totally, I could totally do this. So, um, so yeah, I basically wound up getting into it, um, I wound up just being exposed to it that way. Um, but, you know, like I said, I was a junior in high school, so for the, but after I realized that, for the next, I want to say, five to six years, um, all throughout college and um, to my graduation, I didn't do anything with that. Um, I wanted, I wanted to try things, and I wanted to like audition for things, and you know, but I didn't have a clue. I didn't know what to do or how to start. So I just didn't do anything with that feeling of you know, well, I can totally do this, but I didn't do anything with it for those five to six years. But. Um, after I graduated college, um, four years, um, got my degree and everything, I wound up, um, I was a part of this message board community, uh, CyberConnect, I will say no more than that, but I was a part of this community and um, basically um, I had a friend on there who was trying to make a game and he needed a voice for his lead protagonist. So at the time I'm like, well, here's my chance, you know, I can figure out how to do this whole voice acting thing and maybe um, it'll go somewhere, maybe this game will be awesome and, you know, I, I would have been a part of that. So um, because I wanted to be a part of this game and help out my friend, I essentially wound up um, figuring out, using knowledge that I gained from, um, from another, um, uh, another friend that I had in college. I used stuff that he taught me and um, like how to use Audacity. It's a very well-known free um, application that you can download on your computer. And um, I learned how to basically record using that program. At the time, I, I was just a new, a newbie, completely new. I didn't know a damn thing about voice acting. I managed to find this really small plastic mic. Um, maybe you remember it, they used to ship with old PCs way back in the day, it was just a small, the small tiny little mic thing. So um, I managed to find one of those laying around my house, and um, I start recording. And I recorded uh, the lines that my friend wanted for me, and um, from those lines came my very first YouTube video ever, ever. 
um, and it's long gone now. My, my old YouTube channel is is gone to the wind. Or maybe, or maybe I deleted it myself. I think I deleted my, yeah, I think I might have deleted it myself. Um, so yeah, I, I think I deleted my own channel um, because I was just done with it. Um, but um, that video was my very first video, and all it was was um, the recordings I had done to audition for this character that my that my friend was putting in this game. Obviously, um, the game never took off, and um, that was that. But it was thanks to that friend that I was able to learn um, a system to um, start auditioning for things. So from there, I um, went to the site that I'd known about for a long time, um, Voice Acting Alliance. That was basically the go-to website that most projects and most um, amateur voice actors at the time went to. Um, a lot of um, current um, well-known voiceover, um, voiceover artists are from that site, me included. Um, we were kind of born there, <laughs> and I made an account under the name Ramine, and I meant to establish myself as a protagonist, voiceover guy at the time. <laughs> so um, I just started auditioning for things, and um, you know I wasn't getting cast for anything huge. I wasn't like getting like hugely cast, but I was up against Sean Chiplock and I think River, um, I was up, yeah, I was up against, like, Patrick, uh, Patrick Seymour, all these, all these great people, um, who are, like, fantastic voice talent these days, and, um, I was up against all of them, and, um, you know, I, I got to know some of them, but, um, basically I just started auditioning through there, and, <laughs> wound up getting cast for a number of different roles. Um, eventually I kind of worked my way up and I was getting on, getting cast for um, more, I guess, more um, higher level roles, like protagonist roles. Uh, I was even cast for a for a role as Noctis um, <laughs> at one point. Uh, yeah, I voiced, I voiced the character Noctis like three times before the um, the actual English official voice cast was announced. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey there, ladies. Let me show you a good time. <laughs> okay, so that, that's out of the way. <laughs> so from there, I was... I, I actually start to branch out a little bit. Um, I was still doing fan dubs. Oh god, fan dubs. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, oh, uh, that's like a curse word at this point. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like, I was doing fan dubs at the time, but I was starting to branch out a little bit. Um, there, there was a market for Sims 2 productions at the time, and I took it upon myself to tap into this market. And it didn't take me very long to become the go-to uh, male voice talent to uh, to be cast in these various Sims 2 productions, and you know it was it was nice. Like all these producers at the time wanted to cast me because I was like the only guy doing it. They had all these girls auditioning, but like there weren't many guys in the Sims 2 community because I guess all of the guys were doing fandoms. So. Um, so I was able to tap into that market for a little bit. I made a few friends, uh, a, a few con well, I wouldn't say contacts, but I, I'm, uh, I got to know some of these producers, and they were really nice people. There was a producer named A Little Mid, and uh, she made really great Sims 2 productions, and I was in a number of them, actually. So if you're out there, um, here I am. I don't, I don't know if you will recognize me, but hi. <laughs> I started doing collabs, so um, a lot of my, a lot of the the progress that I made as a voice talent was through doing collaborations. And you know, any YouTuber will tell you that collaborations are definitely the way to go. That's how you meet people, and that's how you gain your following and all that. But uh, yeah, collabs were definitely the thing to do. Uh, I would say, like in early. 
2000, like 2008, 2009, uh, maybe even 2010, uh, collabs were definitely picking up um, um, within the anime voice acting, anime, sorry, amateur voice acting community. Um, so a lot of um, well-known people were starting to learn a bunch of different skills to do their own dubbing projects. And you know, the idea back then was, you know, you collab with someone, you work with them on a project, and then um, through working with that person, um, you may meet other people and then start collabing with them, and from there you may wind up doing a really high level project. And that's essentially what I did for a number of years. Um, I had a chance to work with uh, a friend of mine who is still a very good friend of mine to this day. Um, she had a, um, she started her own collab group called Scared Alliance and um, the channel is still up today if you want to actually link to it in the description below if you want to take a look but um, yeah um, I was a part of that group and we did really big projects I can't say they're not high budget things no um, but they were really significant projects that took a lot of people and a lot of time and a lot of editing work to pull off and I learned a lot and from there, I even established my own two-person group with um, with a friend of mine at the time. She was um, she was an up-and-coming uh, voice actress, and her and I uh, worked together and did our own duo, uh, uh, our own duet kind of channel. The person that I worked with is now a very well well-known voice actress. Um, so. Um, Kudos to her, and I'm very happy for her. So um, that's basically that's basically where that went. Collabs were a very very big thing. After collabs started happening um, over a period of time, it was at this point where a lot of my colleagues were starting to go pro. Um, you know, basically trying to find their way into the actual business to get cast for legitimate work. And, you know, it was around that time where the idea of doing fan dubs was starting to become a little bit of a taboo. And, you know, it's still kind of a taboo to this day. Um, none of us who, um, who are from that time, who um, established ourselves and, you know, made, uh, made steps to go professional, none of us do fan dubs anymore. Um, it's, it's nothing against them, it's great practice. But um, in the um, in the interest of maintaining um, a professional stance and our, our basically um, promote ourselves as legitimate working actors, we don't do fandoms anymore. Um, and that's just that's just you know you, when you move you take steps up and up and up. Um, you eventually just don't really need to do that anymore. But um, if you do fandoms. More power to you. It's it's great practice. Keep doing them. Um, just be sure to credit the people who actually produced it, and don't try to claim it claim it as your own. But do practice. Um, that's how I got started. But um, but yeah, um, going professional at that time was a very uh, big deal. Um, information um, that was previously circulating um, around between my colleagues was not as readily available. People who were well known were starting to kind of band together and find their own way, and it just made it very difficult to kind of find out who was doing what, and things kind of became a, a bit hazy at around that time. As with all of us, we did what we could to survive, and you know, when when we started to realize that going pro was the next step. Um, for me personally, I just start looking at um, what the greats, the actual professionals, were doing at the time, and where they came from, and any of the, well, many of the professional voice actors will tell you that they came from theater, or they came from doing, uh, they, they were doing radio work, like um, Kyle Haybear, the, the iconic Dragon Ball Z announcer voice in the English dub, he was doing radio. Um, before he got into voiceover. So, yeah, basically what I personally did was I started to take when I was able to. I was able to take classes. I trained at various um, studios. 
Um, I, I took various classes when I could. Um, I wasn't very well off or anything, you know, I, I, you know, I was still working, I wasn't doing all, any of this full time, or for a living, so it was when I could. And so I took classes and all that, and I started taking acting classes also. Um, and this is probably around 2013, 2014, when I started um, looking into classes and taking them um, in order to um, pers um, to refine my craft, because, you know, voice acting is a craft. So you essentially, like, we did fan dubs to hone our craft. Around 2013, um, by that time, I had made my own website, I was able to get my demos made, and um, I had done a few paid gigs by that time. So, so that was really great. I was, I felt like I was making progress. You know, every voice acting, every voice actor has their own journey. Um, no journey is the same, and no path is the same. So, um, after I broke away from Voice Acting Alliance, I essentially just started to find my own path. And you know, I, I would look to my colleagues as I as I was able. But essentially, I was just doing my own thing. From there, my first paid client for voiceover work reference, um, she referred me to um, her other friend who I had also worked with loosely, who um, was starting a company, and through him, I was able to start doing audiobooks. And this is again around 2013. And in 2014, um, I came out as transgender, <laughs> publicly. So. Um, with that came a complete rebranding. Um, I spent all of 2013 basically um, redesigning my website. Um, I built my own websites and you know all that stuff. So um, I secretly was putting all this stuff together for when I was going to come out in 2014 on my birthday. So um, I created. I just basically rebranded myself and you know just kind of continued on. And I had to make this. I had to make. Bleh. I had to make a decision to retain all of the previous credits that I had done, not basically just disavow any of the other work that I had done previously. And by doing that, by basically accepting and embracing the work that I had done um, as when I was publicly known as male, I essentially had to, and I wanted to um, become known as a female voiceover artist, but when you already have your stance and your grounding as a male voiceover talent, it's a bit tricky. So um, I had, I was able to get a, a demo together and get that made, and from there I was able to showcase myself as a male and female voiceover artist. But, you know, unbeknownst to anyone, I didn't really know my type for females back then. Um, I knew that I could do sexy really well, but that's that was really all I knew at the time in regards to playing female characters. So, um, and I was still, I, I was, I had still just established this, what, what you're hearing right now. So there was a lot of work that I had to do to get myself to that point. And thanks to audiobooks, um, three years later, three years down the line, now 2017, um, I was able to properly find out my type as a female. And it took a while. Um, it took a lot of, um, like, when you're doing audiobooks, you're kind of forced to explore different things. Or just for me personally, I wanted to explore both the male and the female side of narrating audiobooks, and by doing so, I was able to establish uh, um, various types that I could do um, as a female, and just refine my my sound for for male characters that I could do, because um, you know over time, over time, I would say within the, within two to three years of coming out, I had basically got basically gotten to the point vocally where I had to literally work at it to um, to get myself to that to that range of acting because you know I'm being me right now so um, I had to basically take a voice or just a, a, a range I should say 
a range of voice that I used to do all the time, and that essentially became a um, character voice. So playing like the, the voice that I had always done previously for so many years is now a character voice, while what you're hearing right now is essentially the real me. So um, yeah, that's that's the long and long of it. <laughs> I'm sorry this video was so long. I hope you learned something from it. I, I just wanted to share that with you guys and you know, um, if you have any questions about voiceover, I will do my best to answer them. I don't claim to be an expert on voiceover, nor am, nor do I feel qualified to really teach anyone about voiceover stuff, though I've been doing this for essentially close to a decade, if not more. Yeah, yeah, close to a decade. Um, I still don't feel like I'm at a place where I can like legit teach people or tell people you should do this, but um, I can tell you what I did and you know everyone will find their own way and um, I hope that you find yours if voiceover is something that you want to do. If you're transgender, um, whether um, you identify as male or female or none, um, don't let your transition get in the way of of you pursuing this, because I didn't. And, you know, look at me now. I, I, I mean, you, if you want to hear my demos, they are, um, I do have them on my channel, so you can, I will, uh, I will link them, you know, you, you'll find them. <laughs> but yeah, like, don't let your transition stop you from pursuing this, if this is something you really want to do. So yeah, that's essentially how I got into voiceover, and um, I hope to continue to find new ways and new paths and meet new people and hopefully continue to um, to bloom um, as Nina and as a female voiceover artist. So um, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Um, if you're transgender and, you're, and you want to ask me something, feel free to. If you're not trans and you want to ask me something, go right ahead. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Um, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you want to see more of like this, please consider subscribing. I'm on, I have a number of videos that I want to do for you guys, and I want to talk a little bit more about voiceover stuff too. Not just, you know, LGBTQ stuff, but I'd like to talk about gaming and voiceover stuff too, eventually. So, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, you lovely people.